Hey guys, Janet from Paper and Spark here, and today I wanted to chat with y'all about uh, the latest news out of Etsy, which is the whole free shipping issue, the whole free shipping guarantee question. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since Etsy released this news earlier this month in July. Um, I've waited for the dust to settle a little bit and the initial controversy to settle down a little bit because I wanted to try and look at it um, with a clear head, with a clear perspective, and if you know me at all, I'm an accountant, I'm a numbers person, I'm a very data-driven person, um, so I wanted to try and explore the topic with y'all from more of that perspective, more of like a numbers data perspective. Uh, to help you figure out if you're still on the fence, if you're still considering uh, whether free shipping is going to make sense for you. And then I also have some things that I'd like to discuss with you if you've already decided that you are going to offer that free shipping guarantee. Because if you haven't guessed, my biggest concern with this topic is ensuring that you are priced for profit, that no matter where you fall on the fence with this free shipping or not, I want you to be building a sustainable, long-term, profitable business so that you are able to pay yourself what you deserve, make a profit, reinvest in your shop and grow, uh, all that good stuff and all of that hinges on your pricing, which is definitely impacted by utilizing free shipping. So let's get started. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, I have got a whole blog post with similar content as what I'm about to chat about here if you wanna check out the blog post at paperandspark.com. But uh, I wrote the initial blog post and it's like 20 million pages long because I have so many thoughts on this topic. So I decided that it would probably be a better use of everyone's time if I made a video talking through some of this stuff and I'm gonna show you some numbers and stuff in just a second. In the blog post, I actually began by putting a disclaimer of my personal feelings on this topic. I'm not gonna reiterate that here in the video. So if you wanna check it out, you can read it. I'll, I'll sum it up to say that I am not a fan of Etsy's decision to push free shipping, uh, but I do think there is an argument to be made for free shipping being beneficial. I just think that it should be something that's up to the seller to decide instead of uh, the threat of being penalized for not offering free shipping. And my other huge complaint with free shipping is basically what I've already said. I am concerned that too many handmade sellers are already underpricing and undervaluing their time and their talents. And this is just another kink in the chain that is going to cause more sellers to do just that, which is what I am trying to help you avoid with our discussion today. So let's assume that you're considering offering free shipping. The first thing that I want you to do before you do anything else, look at any numbers, look at what other people are doing, anything else, make sure that your prices right now, your current pricing structure, your strategy right now is rock solid, okay? Because you cannot be dealing with this added complex component of free shipping if you're not currently priced for profit already. You're just going to dig the hole deeper and put another nail in the coffin. So that involves diving deep into your pricing strategy. Do you use a formula? Do you have any sort of set system um, of determining your retail price? You want to make sure that you are truly pricing for profit. You want to make sure that your pricing strategy is covering the cost of your supplies and you're able to pay yourself for your time and it's covering the rest of the cost of running your business besides just the obvious supply costs. I talk about this so much in so many different places. A few quick resources for you. Check out a Paper and Spark inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet. They all have built-in pricing formulas to help you set these profitable retail prices and know your costs and understand your numbers. 
check out this free video training that I co-hosted with Danielle from Meriwether Council, the three key signs you need to fix your prices ASAP. I also cover um, the three key components that you want to make sure you have in your new pricing strategy. You can even check out the full-blown course that Danielle and I created on both the art and science of pricing for handmade called the Pricing Workshop. And this is a course that's going to help you get rock solid with the prices that you need to charge in order to pay yourself what you deserve and how to actually make sales at those prices. So first, really make sure that your prices as they are without even offering free shipping are where they need to be because I can guarantee that a lot of us already are underpriced from where we should be. All right, so let's talk about free shipping when it comes to your pricing formula as a whole. Um, for me, I really have to change my way of thinking about a pricing formula if I'm going to decide to incorporate free shipping. So up until this point, when I'm thinking about my pricing strategy, that formula that I'm gonna use as a base to set a retail price for my handmade goods, um, I consider the cost of the item itself, the supplies and raw materials that go into it, I consider my labor and my time. I consider an overhead rate, which is how I cover the rest of the cost of running my business, the non-supply costs. And I consider a profit markup. That's what enables me to pay myself, to make a profit, to reinvest money in the business and grow. Now, something that I haven't been considering in the past is my shipping cost. And that's because shipping costs are really tricky to estimate and throw into my pricing equation. And it doesn't really matter, it's not necessary for me to estimate it because I can use something like Etsy's calculated shipping tool to know exactly what I need to charge the customer for shipping based on where that specific customer is and what specifically they want to buy in their order. So in the past, you could just use that calculated shipping option as he can automatically figure out what shipping to that customer for the specific order will cost. They can charge the customer that, the customer can pay you that, you go buy your shipping label, it's gonna end up being around the same cost and it all ends up being a wash because the customer has paid you an amount that is very close to or equal to what you end up paying the post office, right? So you break even on shipping. Uh, if you're using something like fixed, fixed cost for shipping, like the Etsy shipping profiles, it's a little bit different, but the overall process is very similar, right? You have figured out some sort of cost for that item. Uh, the customer is paying you, and then you are taking that money as revenue, and then you have the shipping expense of whatever you end up paying for the label, and hopefully those two amounts are pretty close. So that's why I'd never really, so that's why I never really consider shipping as part of my retail price formula. But that is the exact mindset that I need to change if I'm going to decide to utilize free shipping to offer the free shipping guarantee. I need to now take that shipping cost and lump it in as a product cost or as a cost inside that pricing formula, right? So then the question becomes, what is the cost that I'm going to lump in? How do I determine that number? But before I want to get on that, I want to briefly segue into a non-data related or numbers related uh, tangent that I just want to share. As I'm talking about rolling in the cost of shipping, your shipping expense into your retail pricing formula, basically increasing the cost of your item by some sort of average shipping cost, right? When I'm talking about that, I have, I have seen comments and concerns from other shop owners about the moral implications of doing that. Basically offering free shipping or saying to your customer that you're offering free shipping when it's not truly free. You're rolling the cost of the shipping into your product cost so the customer is actually paying for shipping. It's just embedded in the sales price, but the shipping line is literally zero. So some sellers 
believe that this is unethical because it is not truly transparent. And I get that. I totally get that. Um, and you probably don't care what my opinion on the morality of this is, but I'll share it anyway real quick because I feel like I need to get this off my chest. To me, my personal opinion, I believe that the statement free shipping means that there are no additional costs for shipping at checkout. So this is the sales price of the item. I'm going to add it to my cart and there's not gonna be an additional shipping charge surprise uh, when I go to checkout, right? This price is the price. Maybe there will be some sales tax added on later, but that's neither here nor there, right? There's not going to be any additional shipping. To me, that's what free shipping means. To me, as a consumer, free shipping does not mean that the seller is literally eating the cost of shipping this item to me. I don't feel like that is fair to the seller. It's not something that I'm assuming they're doing or expecting them to do. Um, and therefore, I feel like it's pretty fair for me to assume that there's some sort of shipping component or cost embedded in the sales price that I'm seeing that I'm about to click buy on. That, that's, what I, that's how I feel about free shipping. Um, I don't think that it's unreasonable or uh, unethical to state free shipping because the shipping charge is zero, even if there is some shipping cost embedded in the cost of the item. I don't feel like that is unethical to do, but this is definitely one of those questions that you have to ask yourself how you feel, uh, what feels right for you, what feels good for you, because this is your business and you have the right to run your business exactly how you see fit. I totally get that Yes, when you embed free when you embed the cost of shipping into your retail price, which we're going to look at in more detail in a second, you're going to be relying on averages. So that means that some customers are going to end up getting a steal of a deal. They're going to end up paying less overall than had they paid the actual shipping expense to you, and you're going to end up losing some money on shipping that item. And there's gonna be other customers that are gonna end up paying more on just the sales price plus free shipping than had they paid the true shipping expense of that item to their address, right? And you're gonna end up making a little bit of a profit on that item. And so the thought of that may make you squirm a little bit, may make you say that, um, offering, that offering free shipping but embedding it in the price is uh, not ethical. Like I said, it's your business. It's really up to you to decide how you want to handle this, both morally and financially. Now, I do believe that being transparent is important. Most of all, I believe that showing respect to your customers is important. Like I said before, I don't believe that saying free shipping, even though the cost of shipping is embedded in your sales price, is lying to your customers. That's just my personal opinion on the matter. Uh, but what is most important to me to get across with this discussion is that uh, at the top of my priority is that you are valuing your time and talents appropriately and that you are able to pay yourself what you deserve. I do not advocate whatsoever for offering free shipping and just eating the cost of shipping because you are against rolling it into your sales price. I would rather you personally not offer free shipping at all than pay yourself less than what you deserve because you are fearful of duping your customers with the whole free shipping thing. It's most important to me that more women are building profitable, sustainable businesses and covering their costs and pricing for profit. And that is more important to me than, than playing the Etsy game and offering the free shipping, but eating the costs and running your business into the ground. And I will leave off by just saying that your customers don't understand or truly know your business model, okay? When it comes to free shipping, but also with everything else. I'm not saying your customers don't know, so it's okay to lie to them because they're not gonna know it's a lie. I'm just saying, keep this in big perspective. Your customers don't know the cost of running your business period. They don't know your product costs. They don't understand the time and energy and emotional costs that go into running your business and creating your products. Uh, they do not know what it costs 
or what it takes to create and market and package and ship those items, shipping included, um, and they are not going to feel swindled or cheated by whatever you choose your sales price to be if they make the decision to purchase that product. Uh, only you are going to know whether or not you're giving them a deal or you're covering your costs fully or not. And hopefully you are going to account for that the best way for you to build something sustainable and profitable. So just my two cents on that. I don't think there's anything wrong with rolling your shipping costs into your pricing strategy. I think that if you're going to offer shipping, that's the only way to do it because the only alternative to that is eating the cost. And that is something that I don't want you to do because you can very well end up running your shop into the ground if that's what you do, unless you already happen to magically have like a really healthy profit margin and you're okay taking that cut, which is only good, which is not gonna apply to the majority of us. So moving on from that, let's talk about the actual numbers for a second. I want you to think of your business on an overall perspective, okay? Your overall business's profit margin, and that is your total sales, minus your total expenses will get you your net income, hopefully a positive number or a loss if it's a negative number, your net income divided by your total revenue is your profit margin, all right? The bigger that number is, the better. And generally, you want to be at least between 30 and 50% uh, to be running a healthy handmade business, okay? So first, it's good to know what your existing overall business profit margin is. If you're happy with where it is right now, then you want to keep that number around the same. Uh, another way of looking at this is to calculate your existing average order value. So for that, if you are using, this is the Etsy seller spreadsheet, this has some example data in it. If you're using the Etsy seller spreadsheet, I would take a look at your Etsy sales and your Etsy shipping received, okay, so this is your sales not including shipping that customers have paid you. Add that to your Etsy shipping received. You'll get a total revenue number and then divide that by the number of orders that you actually filled during that month. So I want you to use your bookkeeping system to figure out your total Etsy sales including shipping paid. Do not use your Etsy sales circle screen or your Etsy stat screen because a lot of times those do not include shipping received and then that would be throwing your number off. But see, for example, this seller in February, their total gross revenue was $3,474.95. And let's say they filled 85 sales during that time period. So their average order value for February was about $40.88. The goal after instituting free shipping, when you no longer are going to receive any money for shipping on this row, is that your new total Etsy sales would remain on average around $40.88 per order, all right? So another way to look at this is um, you can look at the total shipping that you received and divide it by the number of orders that happened during that month, 85. And this is just example data, which is why it's so drastically low, but um, that means that each order you got about $2.11 for shipping. So across your entire shop, you'd want to be increasing your product listing prices by about $2 and some change, right? Uh, now, of course, it's not as simple as that on a product by product level because you probably have all sorts of different items, uh, weights that can drastically vary, dimensions that can drastically vary, that kind of thing. But I just want you to get that overall picture in your head that you need your average order value without shipping received to be around the same as what your average order value plus shipping received used to be before instituting free shipping. You can also look at your postage costs. If you're using the Etsy seller spreadsheet, you can look at your actual shipping costs and run through the same scenarios. On average, based on how many orders I filled that month, about how much am I paying for shipping per order? 
that is the average, theoretically, that I need to build into all my prices. Now, applying it on a product by product level, uh, if you wanted to do it by hand, you would want to break up your things by product category or by weight or by dimensions, and it can get pretty complicated pretty fast. Luckily, Etsy has developed this new smart pricing tool to help us do the math without having to dig deep into our product by product data. Now this tool is only gonna be activated if you first turn on the free shipping guarantee in your shop. Once you turn it on, you basically get this pop-up that's going to suggest price changes to everything in your shop that's $35 or more based on your history of orders and what you've paid for shipping in the past. Now this really works well if you have been using calculated shipping on Etsy. Uh, it works kind of okay if you've been using those fixed cost shipping profiles, but uh, either way, I encourage you to look at it, start with this as a base. Now, unfortunately, since I sell digital products, I can't show you a really good walkthrough of this example, but you've probably already seen it on your own or you can watch the Etsy help help Q&A uh, walkthrough that they have where they show screenshots of everything or where they have a girl actually walking through the whole process. But uh, if you use calculated shipping, it's going to offer you four options for suggested pricing increases. One of them not being an increase, one of them being keep your current prices. This is what I advise against. Please don't eat the cost, increase it to account for some sort of shipping expense. The other option being closest buyer. I don't like this one either because you're probably gonna end up losing money uh, on this option. Uh, the two that I suggest analyzing are your average buyer distance, which is going to increase it by the amount it costs to ship the median distance of your in the US orders in the past year. Uh, the other option is the farthest buyer, the farthest possible location from you within the continental US will be this option. So I would look at these two because I feel like these two give you the biggest chance of not losing money when it comes to what you actually end up paying for shipping. If you've been using fixed shipping, they're pretty much going to uh, just tell you what shipping profile that specific listing belonged to and what that fixed shipping cost was so you can embed it in your price if you want to. Now for the most part, when you go through the smart pricing tool, you're gonna know whether, whether or not this process is gonna make sense to you. It, it works well for sellers who sell relatively homogeneous items, uh, like everything in your shop is around the same size, same weight. Uh, it works okay for lightweight items, um, and it works well for shops that have a lot of past historical data for the tool to work with. But it's not gonna work well for a lot of people uh, because those three things that I just said don't apply to many, many people. And we'll get to that in a second. But first I just wanna say, if you're using this tool and you're looking at the prices suggested for you, now is the time for you to revisit your prices. Remember, you can look at your pricing spreadsheet if you're using one. If you need to take a course on pricing to make sure your prices are right, by all means, check out the pricing workshop. This is the point where instead of just blindly going with the suggestions Etsy makes, you do a little bit of reflection on your current costs. So now let's talk about a few of the caveats to this, right? And how easy the smart pricing tool makes it seem. Um, First, when you, begin when you begin listing new products, you're gonna have to be doing this work yourself. Second, new listings aside, there are many situations where relying on one average number in your pricing structure is just gonna be really difficult. If you sell mostly low priced items, but customers often buy more than one listing in your shop, like a supply shop, for instance, uh, if you sell a heavier item or a bigger item where shipping prices can greatly vary based on where in the U.S. it's going, uh, if you have a healthy mix of domestic and international buyers, that's going to get tricky. 
Um, and if your shop has a bunch of just different types of items, small things, big things, heavy things, light things, um, where the shipping costs can vary drastically based on what compromises the order. Uh, if any of these scenarios apply to you, then it's just gonna make offering free shipping that much harder. Um, and unfortunately, I really wanted to like come up with this awesome like mathematical way to like help you see what your magical average number should be. Uh, but there's there's no, my brain is not smart enough to figure out a way to cover all the possible scenarios, right? It's just, I don't think it's possible. If you decide to institute free shipping guarantee, I think the only thing you can really do is go with one of those average numbers and really, 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 you have to consistently monitor and analyze the results. Every month, every week, if you have a high volume of transactions, you need to be looking at your bookkeeping system. You need to look back at those numbers and you need to see where you are landing over time. Is your profit margin on your business overall increasing or decreasing? Is it staying in the zone that you want it to stay in or are you losing money overall? Because the, the thing about the averages is that you're banking on volume. Sometimes you're gonna sell items and you're going to lose money on shipping. Sometimes you're gonna sell items and you're going to make money on shipping. Your goal is that overall, over the span of those orders, you're breaking even or maybe you're making a slight profit, right? The goal that you want to, the outcome that you want to avoid is losing money over time, right? If you are always losing a little bit overall, then you know that that average number that you embedded in your sales price is too low, right? It needs to be increased. Or maybe free shipping is just not gonna work for you. So that is the key. There's not one like catch all, there's not some sort of trick that I can show you to find the magic number to use in your price because there's too many variables. The only thing you can do if you decide to institute free shipping is constantly review your results. You have to be constantly looking at your overall business's financial health. I'd love for you to use something like the Etsy seller spreadsheet to help you do that, but any good bookkeeping system is going to allow you to stay on top of those numbers as long as you know what you're looking for. Like I say in my blog article, do not cross your fingers and just hope for the best. You have to do the hard work of actually looking at this, analyzing it, and making sure it's working for you, making adjustments if it's not, or throwing in the towel and not giving into the free shipping hoopla if you see that you are losing money on doing this. Remember, my overall goal for you is to build a shop that is profitable and sustainable, and it's not gonna be either one if over the long term you're losing money because you're offering free shipping. So there you go, friend. I hope that you check out the blog post for a few other things that I didn't cover here, like, like how to handle returns if you want to do free shipping, what to do if you have international buyers, uh, and a few other considerations. Um, I, I hope that this helps you Put it in perspective a little bit. Know that free shipping is just one component of successfully selling on Etsy. Know that uh, help this be a put help this be a motivator to you if you want to take more control over your traffic and how you're driving sales to your shop. And also let it be a motivator to you to stay on top of your numbers. Really understand your profit margin. Um, and keep consistently looking at this stuff so that you can run your business more effectively and pay yourself what you deserve. If you have any questions for me, please leave a comment on the video. Send me an email at hello at paperandspark.com. I'd love to hear from you. Bye and good luck.